and welcome back. We have the wonderful Gary Anthony Williams. I, you know, I hate to, I hate to admit it, but I, I am wonderful. You feel wonderful. I, I am not just feel it. I'm literally wonderful, as in full of wonder. Did you ever eat Wonder Bread? Oh uh, yeah, when I was a kid, yeah, definitely. Well, so Wonder Bread was a little bit more on the expensive side. Like I told you, like we grew up really poor, but I remember watching the commercials and they would squeeze the bag and they would make it look all nice and soft. Yeah. So I do remember, like, I remember some of the first times I ate Wonder Bread and then thinking, oh, it, it, it tastes like regular bread. It doesn't bounce back. It just squishes. Certain things, but the commercials, Paula, like the Wonder Bread commercial made it look amazing. Uh, not only was I, I didn't realize at the time, but I had a milk allergy. My mother later told me. But when, they would, when I would see a commercial of them pouring a glass of milk, the white milk flowing into the glass, it looked so delicious to me. In my mind, I could see the vitamin D. I remember thinking that as a kid. And I hate the taste of milk. Never liked it unless it was like in cereal with a bunch of sugar. And even now, there's a new milk product called Not Milk uh, that's made by some Amazon scientists made it. It's called Not Milk. And this one tastes like milk. It leaves that milk taste in your mouth. And I tried it the other day and I went, oh, I haven't had milk since night. 1987. So in having that taste, like, oh, in my brain immediately went, oh, that's, that's that milk. That's milk. That's the milk. It like really tricked my brain. And I hated the taste of it. And now I hope that your show is not sponsored by the National Dairy Association. No, but uh, the question we do have is yes. there a food that you wish you liked, but your body didn't? That I wish I liked? Yeah, so clearly not milk, because then you realize you don't like it. Even I don't when really like the taste milk. of it. But Is it something you wish you liked? I wish I liked. <laughs> wait, wait, why wouldn't I just like it then? Well, okay, for, okay, for example. Yeah. I don't like tomatoes. Uh-huh. Anything that tastes like tomatoes. But As you, a child, yes. it was in so many foods. Yes. There was a lot of, I would say, basically food abuse of Give, making me uh, uh -huh. but there was a moment where my sibling and cousins went into the bottom of the fridge picked yep. out these tomatoes that yes. look amazing yes. and they all bit into them and were like mm. so i went in i was like yep. this clearly must be a mind issue because mm -hmm. that looks amazing mm -hmm. i got the yep. tomato took the bite yeah Nope. Yeah. Uh, my exact experience with that was cornbread and buttermilk. My cousins, the Stinchcombs, their real last name, they would have these beautiful, there were these old school aluminum tumblers that had these like pastel colors and they would crumble warm buttermilk in there. I mean, warm cornbread and pour cold buttermilk and chop it up with a spoon and they would eat it like a mush. Mm. And it looked amazing. And so my dad used to eat it and I was like, oh, I wanna make some. He was like, okay, so put some in there. I was like, it, cause my cousins ate it like, and I put it in my mouth and it was just the most horrible thing that I could ever imagine. Like I, I could not understand why they would eat that. Like why my dad wanted that, why my cousins, my dad, he was older. So it was like, well, he's an older guy, who knows? But my cousins who were my age, like, why are you sticking that in your mouth? Who tricked you into thinking that that was something that you should be eating? I never, I, at that time I wanted to like it, of course, because they liked it, or at least I thought that's delicious. It wasn't. Mm. Uh, I don't think there's anything that I wish I liked. Like if I saw somebody eating something, there are things that I go, man, that sucks. I can't really eat that. At first it was ice cream when I wasn't able to eat it anymore. And I would see somebody older eating it and go, ah, how can that 90 year old man be sitting there with his 92 year old wife 
enjoying that ice cream cone when I can't even put a spoon of it in my mouth without getting stomach cramps. Not just gas, Paula, but like roll around on the floor stomach cramps, like horrible. Mm. So at, at first it was that, but it brought me so much pain. It was like, I don't need that in my life. So I don't think there's anything that I wish. Well, maybe as a child, ice cream is because nowadays you've got all kinds of different types of ice Absolutely. cream. Absolutely. Right? I, make, I make my own all the time. Yeah. But then it was a different issue. Well, and- as a kid, as a young kid, I could eat ice cream. Oh. Uh, the, like the milk I hated, like I could never, I never drank like in school, like a carton of milk. There's no way I could turn up a carton of white milk. Chocolate, yeah, because it was just sugar and chocolate. In there. <laughs> I, I have never been able in my life to drink a glass of milk, a carton of milk. I've never liked the taste. I've never liked the consistency. If it was in ice cream, absolutely. If it was in sugared cereal, absolutely. So I could do that as a kid. As an adult, I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And then I found out later from my mom when she was 80 on her 80th birthday, she goes, oh, that's because you were, uh, you're not just lactose intolerant. You were allergic to dairy. You almost died as a baby. You were in the hospital. And I was like, <laughs> somebody could have told me, number one, that would have been helpful. But number two, apparently it went away as things might, I guess. And then it came back with a harshness in the year 1996, December of that year, I remembered fondly. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> now when you dream of flying yes how do you fly it has changed over the years Ooh. um it used to be to launch myself i think i dreamt of flying last night by the way it used to be to launch myself this is a crazy story i would lean straight back just lean back with my back straight and my head would almost touch the ground, the back of my head. And then I would poo, propel myself forward and then I could take flight. Okay. Now, what did you do with your arms? Uh, at that point, it didn't matter. I didn't have to be like Superman. None of that stuff. My arms could be doing whatever they wanted to do. Uh, I started going to a gym years and years ago. And there was a machine they had at the gym for your back. Mm-hmm. And I had never been on this machine. And I had never been really in a gym because I didn't like the smell of them. The first time I got on that machine and leaned back and I let it propel me too fast, it was like, <gasps> it was that feeling of that's exactly what it feels like when I launch myself in the dreams to fly. I don't do that anymore. Sometimes I can move my feet side to side, kind of like the opposite of uh, Dorothy going home, clicking her heels. It's like almost clicking my toes. Sometimes I can launch like that. Sometimes I take a step up in the air as though I'm stepping onto a step. And once that one foot's in the air, I can just lift the other one up even to it. And then after that, I can just fly. Mm, Are you fly uh, like with your knees bent? Uh, I can, it can be anyways. I can be body straight out in the air. I can be straight up and down. I, there are no, uh, there are no limits to the way that I can fly. Like as far as for my body formation in the air, there's no limits. The, the differences are how I launch, how I launch myself into the air. Sometimes I have to go climb up on top of something really tall and jump down and almost hit the ground and then swoop back up into the air. Oh, so you swoop up. Yes. Ah, okay. But sometimes it, is, it, it really varies, but I fly, I fly in my dreams most nights. I would definitely if it's out of a seven day period, definitely I'm flying the majority of the week. Whoa, yeah. that's a lot of flying. Yeah, well, hey, I'm a professional. What can I say? I can fly. Are you flying? Is it a particular recurring dream? You mean, is it the same flying all the time? No, so there is some stuff that I love to do. Uh, and by the way, a lot of times when I dreamed, I'm very, what is, it, is it called fluid? What is it when you, lucent, uh, it, lucent dreaming? When lucid you know you're dreaming. Lucid, lucid when mm-hmm. you know you're dreaming. Um, but a lot of times it's uh, like, sometimes I will screw with people. I will go, uh, and usually in my dreams, I'm still very heavy. And I was like, uh, I think I can broad jump further than you. You know, that's when you just stand at a line. And then you just jump with both feet and you see. 
Now, I know that I can fly, but they don't know it. So I always broad jump just enough to beat them. Like if they went five feet, then I, and they're still standing there, I just always, and I let them go first every time, and I just enough to pass them, knowing that I'm actually flying, I'm just choosing to land past you. So I do that a lot. Sometimes I'll make people think, oh, I'm gonna go jump up this bridge. And then they'll go, Gary, no, don't do the Gary, no. And then I'll dive down. And then right before I hit the ground, I come back up. I tricked you guys. I, I can fly. Yeah, wow, well, you can fly. That's cool. And sometimes I'm just flying, just going places, you know. Well, wow, I don't think we've talked to anyone who's flown as much as you had on a regular basis. Oh, well, I, why not just do it? Do you dream of flying when you're on an airplane? No, I've never jumped a flying one on a plane. All right, then. All no, right, now, nickname. I'm not, I'm not flying within a flight, if that's what you're asking me. If I'm dumb, no, no, never, never. It's just not who I am. <laughs> just not who I am. Not even in first class? Not even in first class. Not even then. Not even if I was sitting in the pilot's lap. Not even then. Okay, well, that's a whole other episode. Oh, I don't know. We could, we could weave it in. So we nickname, good lap seating. were yes. you called any nicknames as a child? Uh, I'm black, so yes, that's okay. like a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. uh, I, with my family, I was Boomer. That was always my nickname. So boomer. you were okay Boomer before the phrase came about? Yes, yeah. And so even now, if somebody said, ah, Boomer, like a, a guy once on Instagram, like was called me Boomer. And I was like, yeah, what? What, what do you want? Yeah, so yeah, whatever. Call, call me Boomer. I don't care. Uh, were there any nicknames that you cognized for people that became legendary? That I called them? Yes, and it, it stuck with someone and you were the original uh, source yeah, of inspiration. Uh, my friend Corey, I started calling Coco. I'm, I hate to brag, but uh, <clears throat> I'm quite known for naming things. Uh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, in junior high, you, if you want to go to Fayette County Junior High School, the mascot Scrappy still has the name Scrappy, and there's probably still a trophy with my name on it for giving Scrappy the name. Uh, and I say that only to brag. Um, Fair enough. So, yeah, yeah, I'm known for naming things. Yeah, yeah. All yes. right. The answer is yes, multiple people. All right. Multiple where in the uh, world have you not visited, but you'd like to? Oh, everywhere. I mean, I've been to some places with the acting world. Um, but so many places. My son is going to college now. So um, now I'll have more time. If I, if I have the money left, I'll have more time to travel. Um, so everywhere. Everywhere that I haven't been that uh, acting has taken me. Like I've gotten a chance to go to South Africa. Um, and I don't know if you know this about Africa, but they literally invented people there. If I were the Africans, I'd be wearing a shirt, go screw Germany inventing the Porsche. Like screw Italy and their meatballs. We invented people. They invented human beings there. Uh, so I would love to go back to Africa to see parts of that. I was in South Africa. I know Africa is not a country. It is a continent. So I'd like to see some other countries there. But everywhere that I haven't been is where I would like to go. I sincerely like seeing things and people and smelling things that I have not seen uh, and smelled before. Now, is there a favorite phrase you just enjoy whether it's in English or not, doesn't have to mean you enjoy the meaning of the phrase, but you just kind of like saying it or makes you giggle. I get stuck in loops all the time. <laughs> saying stuff. Like I get stuck in loops all the time. I'll start saying some stupid thing and then it'll be months later I'm saying it. Um, the other night it, I, I realized that me and my writing partner were meeting with this producer and she was calling us friend all the time. Friend, let me tell you, friend, friend this. And she goes, you know, I got that from you. And at that time, like literally, I was just calling people friend all the time. And we had worked together two years ago. So I'm out of that now. Lately, I say, uh, well, that's in the Bible. And it could literally be about anything. 
it was like, ah, oh, this paper, this paper is so wrinkled. And of course, that's in the Bible about the wrinkled paper. It will be <laughs> stuff that has nothing to do with it. So um, that happens a lot. At one point, it would be as a black man. And I would say, well, as a black man, I really enjoy this bottle of water. Uh, but, you know, as a black man, I, as a black man, I think it's 1140 a.m. Uh, so I get caught in uh, I get caught in stupid loops of saying things all the time until I wear those out in my own head and then I'm accidentally onto something else that I'll get stuck in. Well, if you have some favorite phrases that you'd like this black man's voice to say, no. pop them in the comments. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely heard the friend and as a black man, I, yeah. I've heard those over the years. Of well, of now. course you have. I mean, that's in the Bible. That's on page 38. <laughs> You know, I, really like to tell I you thought that was like XX41. I, well, <laughs> I don't know what, page, what Bible you're reading. I mean, I'm reading that big one. I, oh, I, okay. I also like to tell you what page things are on in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes what paragraph. Oh, very good. That, that's well, page 38, paragraph three. If you have enjoyed uh, the baguettes of gary here please pop it down in the comments we all hope that you've enjoyed him like and subscribe and again if you want to help us support you with all your media please pop that down there and we create a community in the meantime we will say for the next cosmic chat cheerio oh, do we not get to say toodle toodle bang or whatever it was from last you can time? say that but there's a second one it's a new word a new okay. phrase a new yeah. word and a new phrase so okay keep moving on. Che che cheerio 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 it's in the bible that's in the bible page 15